Melanie Trotta asked me to do something in silver for her. Silver is easier than gold. I only really have one recipe for silver because it's just reusing the same pencils over and over and you get a different look with more black or more silver in it or more white in it. As more white, it looks more shiny. So I got this picture out of the Elena Lazareva 100 Grayscale Picture Book. And I, as soon as I saw this picture, I was like, oh, I got to do this picture. This looks like so much fun. So cupcake tins are silver, so at least the ones I have. So I thought, oh, this is a good good way to do it. And I start off with my cool grays. Now let's, let's even talk about the picture. I only use cool grays. You can use warm grays, but you just don't get the same look. So when you're thinking silver, just think cool gray. Black. And then I got out 30%, I got out my silver, I got out my 70%, my white, and this is a 50%. Now, if I need any sort of lighter or in-between color, I'll create it. Any of these colors, any of the cool grays from your 90 to your 10% cool grays will do the trick. These are just the colors I pulled for today. Let's do this one. Okay, because this doesn't look like it's a silver. This is a silver. This is a silver. So let's start with this one. And you're going to look at the direction that the silver is going. Now, in these cupcake tins, it's making a round. So whenever you have a round thing going this way, your silver, your highlights are going to be basically in the middle and it's going to come together. And that's the rule of doing highlights. I'm going to start with a 50% and I'm going to just do the edges. Now, you don't need a grayscale. I found this picture. It just happens to be grayscale and I liked it. I often don't follow the grayscale coloration. Elena happens to be really good. So I trust her shading a lot. And I'm just forming a little bit of a gradient on both sides. And a little bit on the top. Sort of framing it out. Very easy. Now remember, you never start with your darkest color. That's why I'm starting sort of with a mid-tone on a darker side of mid-tone, but mid-tone. Now I have room to go. I'm going to get a little bit darker and I'm going to go with my 70% because in the tins, it goes like jagged like that. So I'm going to put in a darker side so that we keep our striated lines. Now, as you get towards the middle where the bright highlight is, those striations are going to so, sort of be too bright to do really dark. So be careful over where your highlight is. Very light. Very, very light. Just to get them there, but you see how the I'm keeping the shape of that highlight? Then I'm going to get my silver. <laughs> And a little bit about the metallic colors. Silver does not create silver. Silver is a silver color. It's not going to, if you did this whole entire thing in just silver, you'd have a very flat looking silver object. You want to create those highlights. It just so happens that silver is a good color to colors silver. So I'm going to add in A little bit of the silver it's actually darker the color silver like if you look over here it's a darker gray it just happens to have a metallic sheen on it so if I wanted to do and use this as my darkest color I can so I'm gonna just put the little bit of sheen on the way edge and I'm talking like Bob Ross again. 
making happy little cupcakes because the world is just wonderful and full of sweet things. Okay, now I'm going to add in some white. The white is very important because before I get any sort of color in there, now this will keep my highlight white and I'm gonna get a nice clean sharp edge on it because the edge of the cupcake is a hard edge, not a blended edge. Blend that in so that it doesn't look like it's a ring of pearls. We don't like ring of pearls. What is a ring of pearls? It's that dark line that people put around their pictures that make it not look realistic. And let's get in some brighter white and I'm going to use my pit pen and just brighten that up. The brighter the white, the brighter the cupcake, the silver on the cupcake. And we'll just put a little bit down here to give that cupcake a shine. And the top. And we'll get a second coat going right there. See how bright it's getting? It's gonna blind you. And there's how you do silver. Now, if my background was black, it would really pop out. And so don't get frustrated. I put in a little bit of highlights down there as there's something that's reflecting. And that would be the light reflecting off the tin onto the bottom. And then I just went in. And shaded this up and you don't want to put too hard of a line and there you go the top I just did quickly with pink crimson lake I used magenta it's because they were on the my desk and let's get a little bit more dark right under here very light and there we have it, silver. And the darker you get the color, the more dramatic the silver is gonna look. This is an optional step and I wasn't gonna include it, but I think I'm going to. When you're rendering metal, especially silver, there's going to be a reflective highlight. And if you've noticed, my light is coming in here and I've got a little bit of a highlight and this is for more advanced students, so don't get frustrated. I put in a little bit of highlights down there. As there's something that's reflecting. And that would be the light reflecting off the tin onto the bottom. And then I just went in and shaded this up. So you have it going down.
working on Misty. I had missed a couple of days in doing it. And basically this part of the video, I'm just trying to get that bottom layer on and I'm following very closely with the reference picture. So you can watch and follow along. It's just a matter of getting in and doing it. And I, it's funny because I've been talking with a woman uh, in email about how she's afraid and there is nothing to be afraid of. You can screw up so badly. Even if you're try, just trying hyper-realism, there's going to be, and actually I'm talking directly to Melody and a couple of other people who have handed in pictures to me that were a little underdone. And one person uh, was complaining to me, oh my God, I worked on this picture and it's so ugly. And I looked at the picture and I'm like, that is not ugly. Oh my God, it's underdone. There is like an ugly point of every picture where you just got your bottom layers on. Nothing is looking realistic. Nothing is looking blended up. But then all of a sudden you work on it for just a few more minutes and areas that you've worked on suddenly come to life. And once that starts happening, it's like magic. It just brightens up and one area leads to another and that's your upper areas. When people don't take it to that point, they're missing out on the best part of the picture. The bottom just putting on the wax is just establishing a base. It's like building a house and only living in the foundation. Once you get that foundation built, and that's what I'm doing here, I'm building my foundation. The fun later comes when you're looking at the picture and you're adding in those little details. And every little detail could be just a little line here and a little line there. Make a huge difference to what the overall picture looks like. So don't give up. Even if, if there is tooth on your page, there is help. And if there's no tooth on your page, there's even help because you can add a spray fixative um, that will give you more tooth. I use one by brush and pencil. And if I run out of uh, if I run out of tooth, I know that I can always add more. It really helps to print these pictures out on good paper. Now I'm using the Bristol uh, Smooth on this picture and I have tooth from now to forever. Um, nowhere near close to filling up my tooth or even damaging the tooth. And yet the bottom layers are coming on and the, and the colors are starting to come together. Some people would be like, oh, you're done with the ears. I'm not even close to being done with the ears because that upper layer where I'm going to add in the individual hairs and tufts where it's going in various directions and the subtle shading, that's what's going to make it all better. It's going to put in that realistic look that you're striving for. And everybody strives for a more realistic look. I mean, unless you're doing something, something like abstract or something um, that's not like a real picture, even cartoon pictures look better when there's some sort of realism in there. And that involves getting rid of those heavy black lines, that cart that coloring book cartoon feeling. Now, some people may like that cartoon feeling. In some pictures that I have, it calls for a little bit of cartoony outline on it. It is a matter of taste, but if you're learning colored pencils, it's one of the reasons that I just love uh, Elena Lazareva's work because she doesn't put those heavy black lines and she leaves enough open space that you can add your own details. Um, and I know I work from her books all the time and you might be getting sick of me working from her books, but they just are great examples and perfect for teaching. And 
But once you start doing your own artwork um, or putting these pictures on good paper, you will see. It'll make all the difference in the world. So I'm going to put on a little music. Uh, there's nothing new, still working on those bottom layers. Um, so I will see you guys in my next video and take care. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that like and subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell for all notifications. For another video just like this one, I recommend this. And I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Keep on coloring.